right, guys. All pig cat calls and jokes aside, Marverni is a nation that certainly has some issues, and that's sort of what made it take so long for me to get this guide together, as Marverni's issues are essentially its early game weakness and its variety. I say that knowing full well how stupid it sounds, making variety a downside, but if you really deep dive into Marverni, you realize there are very strong camps for both the Druid-focused playstyle and the Boar-focused playstyles. Both camps make good arguments for different pretender setups, and the worst part is that they're both correct in their thinking. Boars are a trap. They have magic resistance 5, relatively low protection of 8. They trample, but they're undisciplined, so they're hard to hold still to buff. Medium-sized at 5, so giants cause them a problem because Jotunheim giants are size 6, and there are plenty of giant things that are size 6 in early age. But they're cheap or free, you know, depending on how you get them, and sacred, so they're always tempting to play around. I view them somewhat like flagellants. I wouldn't build my strategy around them unless I found another way to use it as well. Druids, however, are also somewhat of a trap. They're human mages, and so they're vulnerable to all those little battlefield-wide damage spells, Rain of Stones, Firestorm, all that, and yet you're entirely dependent on them to survive in large communions to get huge buffs, massive scripting that can be destroyed with a single lucky arrow, and then when they go off script, they tend to massacre all of your own troops with Gifts from Heaven. And now Gifts from Heaven even leaves Burning Ground to remind you of where you just massacred your own troops to add insult to injury. This gives us a problem. If we invest in Druids, we need boars to protect our Druids because our human troops are too expensive for for what you get, and by that I mean mage action. If you continue using human troops to the very end, your national troops in particular, then you need to have mages waste their turns to awaken tattoos on them, and then they're vulnerable to magical weapons, and they're just not that impressive against magical weapons. And frankly, if you're paying for all of your troops and then you gifts from heaven them, you're really going to lose the battle of attrition against other nations. So we need cheap reusable chaff in every battle, along with a ton of druids. So if we invest in piggies, our problem is we need a way to deal with giants, because gifts from heaven plus piggies equals a lot of dead piggies, and gifts from heaven would be the way to deal with giants, right? People often do things such as blood vengeance on the pigs to ensure that they win the HP battle trade-off. The enemy kills mass amounts of pigs and dies for it because every time they hit the pig, they take the damage too, and then you win the overall cost battle because they pay for their mages, you don't pay for your pigs on the initial cost. Problem is, if your druid communion goes off script and even once hits a pig with a gift from heaven, they're going to explode everywhere. Some people go with a larger bless for pigs to take cavalry out of the equation, because then pigs go from size 5 to 6 and now horses can be trampled. Then you're spending a lot of pretender points on just being slightly better versus cavalry, but still bad versus giants at size 6. They aren't kill efficient enough to survive the morale routes of a huge giant cutting swaths of blood through their hordes. So, even though it's not traditional, I'm going to take a completely different approach to Merverni. Instead of focusing on pigs or druids, which are both so straightforward and well researched, and they're already fairly easy to understand and counter, I'm going to focus on a non-national spell to cover a lot of our problems, and then focus on the druids to handle the rest. Okay, maybe some piggies too. Before I get deep in the weeds on that, let's instead hop into the basic national overview, and then we'll get straight into our complicated strategies. All right, let's go over Marverni. Let's go pretty briefly because I'm going to summarize the whole thing right off the bat, so if you want to skip this part of the video, you can. Marverni has somewhat elite human troops, and by somewhat elite, I mean terrible. They are not the greatest, but not the worst. But one thing we're going to pay attention to first are our commanders. Scout, pretty typical. He has a tattoo, but nobody cares. Chieftain, not a great leader. I don't use him for anything. Other chieftain, other chieftain. I whip past these guys because I don't really want my commanders charging in a battle berserk. The opponent chieftain, he's good if you really want a better level prophet. You've killed your prophet somewhere in there. Here's where it really gets interesting. So Vergebret, they're old. They start old. They have decent leadership, but they don't get the bonus for line formations or anything, so I don't really mess with them. Sakanis, I love spamming these guys early to counteract the misfortune we take, which you'll see in Pretender Creation, and they're also really good for stellar cascade spam or just jumping into community unions as extra bodies. You can recruit them at any castle, so that's nice. Gutwaters, they're great for awakening tattoos and summoning your boars if you're going for the ordinary boars. Druids are great for virtually everything you want to do early game, and that's pretty much all there is to say for it. They're good leaders, so if you combine a druid and a gutwater early, you can make a really solid expansion party because you have this guy casting awakened tattoos, making all your troops really strong, and you have this guy casting bless to bless all of your troops. You know, you could do the same thing with this guy instead, but again, He's old and he's stinky. Don't trust him. The Boar Lord here, I don't like him. Not great. Has Berserk. I don't ever like Berserk. If you wanted to do light, light raiding or thugging with this guy, you could. I just wouldn't invest that much into him. He'd be a good raider, but he wouldn't be a very good thug because he'd be too easy to counter. And here is our shining example of all the benefits and all the downsides of human spellcasters. It says he's old, but only by two years. And in my experience, anytime he pulls a single nature path, he's not old. So these guys, I, I would not take an unaging bless for them. I've 
I've seen people talk about unaging blesses. I've never taken it, and I don't like it. I don't think it's good for these guys. I think it's way too much investment for a guy you can only build in your cap. And frankly, even if he is old, he's not that old, so he's not going to be suffering nearly as much. And again, if he pulls a nature, he's not going to be even old age. So these Elder Druids enable a ton of stuff for you. With their Earth Paths, if you pop Earth 4, which is pretty often in a battle in a game, you'll be able to spam major battlefield spells. You'll be able to cast, heck, you can even boost them and get some global battles going on. With their Astral, if they pop 2 Astral for a 4 Astral, you have an insanely powerful Astral Caster or Forger. If they pop 2 Nature, you have 2, 2, and 2 of some of the most beneficial paths for troop buffing you could ask for. A guy with, you know, 2 Earth, 2 Nature may not be as good as 4 Nature, but he can still spam buffs whatever you need, especially when you communion them. And if a guy pulls 2 Water, you now have Water in your communion. It's a human communion nation. There's not really much more to say other than, you know... Our communions are kind of what we build on. Temples are really cheap for this nation. That's super important so you can spam up your dominion to ramp up your boar production if you buy the boar of Carnutes. We don't have a lot of magical diversity other than what our guys give us, but we do have good battle mages. That's a pretty good thing because these guys can pop out some pretty decent battle mages. These guys guarantee us decent battle mages, so we're good to go. When you look at troops, we don't have the greatest. We have a slinger. This guy sucks. We have a javelinier. This guy also sucks. We have a bare-chested warrior that throws a javelin. This guy also sucks. I know in Dominions 5, people loved starting off with javelins and taking out indie provinces. That does not work in my experience in Dominion 6. I have tried going out with expansion armies of 60 of these guys, and they lost routinely every time. They're just not that great until they get their tattoos rolling, and even then, these guys only get tattoos 1. Look at this guy, tattoo 1, tattoo 1, tattoo 1, and this is the bear tattoo for invulnerability and strength. Doesn't really help. If you look up the bear-chested warrior, again, bear-chested. Here's the big problem. So if you see a good example of what the problem is, is this Carnute Noble Warrior. He's 15 resources and 13 protection. And you go, why would I pay all of that when I could go Carnute Bear Chested Warrior for six and get two and a half of these guys for one of the other guy and then just buff him up with his tattoo. This guy gets a tattoo of two for invulnerability. The Noble Warrior gets a tattoo of three. What's the big difference, right? Well, first of all, tattoo of three means he's essentially getting, I believe, 15 invulnerability instead of 10. So that gives him a lot more against mundane attacks. But the other thing is when you're casting legions of steel you have three things that can be buffed here by legions of steel when you go look at this bare chested guy he just got a cap and a shield his chest gets hit he's taking damage so you're actually getting exactly what you pay for with this human nation problem is you don't have anything you can really lean on the problem with the boar warrior their big sacred guy oh i guess i should go in order i will be very brief here this guy has decent defense everything else is eh. these guys are very eh, very eh. the one thing i want to point out is how versatile they are so you look at this ambibet bare chested warrior he does not have berserk so if you're having morale problems this is not the guy you want. However, Magic Wolf Tattoo gives attack skill, right? So if you look at the Ambibits, let's find the best Ambibit they got. Ambibit Noble, Magic Wolf, attack skill and invulnerability. If you're hitting high defense opponents, they start with 13 attack skill. They get their attack skill boosted multiple points from this. These are the guys to get against elves because they will hit the elves and they have a decent defense against the elves attack skill. If you're fighting people who have really good protection, look at these guys. They've got Berserker 3. They gain invulnerability for their normal protection, but they start with a 19 damage axe. So it goes up to 22 when you're berserking. These guys are great for high protection troops. I mean, obviously your sacreds are better, but I'm just talking about the generic troops. This guy gives you morale boost, but he has a bad morale to begin with. I think he's terrible. I never buy these guys, pretty much ever. But if you look, all your different guys have different purposes. Invulnerability and strength, you need more damage, throw a bunch of these guys in there. They start with good protection and defense. They get invulnerability and strength so they can hit harder. There's a lot of flexibility you have. The problem is you're still human troops in an age that has giants, dragons, and everything else flying around. So I don't like focusing too much on these guys because I barely recruit any of them to save costs once I get my boar production going. But boar warriors are something that we do need to pay attention to because they will be useful all game for you. They are cap only. You can see they have insanely good damage for a one-handed weapon and decent attack. They have bodyguard three, which is what I use them for late game primarily. They have magic boar tattoo five, which I believe gives them 18 in vulnerability. I might be remembering the invulnerability wrong, but you understand the idea. Five is higher than four is higher than three, etc. Berserker 4, which raises their protection up. Now, remember, Berserker and the Invulnerability Tattoo do not stack. However, if you get the Invulnerability Tattoo, you'll have 23 protection against attacks in general that are mundane, but the Berserker will protect you if the attack is not mundane, if somebody's hitting you with a magical attack and doing protection-based damage. You will then have something like, you know, 4 natural protection, which boosts this, you know, 16 up to 18, 19. So it does help, but the primary reason for the Berserker is obviously the attack and the damage 
from their strength. These guys hit like trucks, and with our Quickness Bless, they rip through people pretty quickly. So the Sacreds are strong enough to depend on in small numbers early game, especially with these tattoos on them. They're actually pretty ridiculous units once you get that against mundane weapons, but nothing too strong to lean on because we are fighting players, man. You're not going to be facing a bunch of mundane weapons. Check out our site here, Boar Warrior, Boar Lord, and Elder Druid. The only one that really matters here is the Elder Druid and the Boar Warrior. Now, here's one thing. Everybody tells me to summon boars with nature gems. We only make one nature gem. The two earth gems here tell us that we should focus on iron pigs, and the astral pearls can be converted to either one, so it defeats my purpose, but I'm not going to admit that. So let's go focus on our strategy with iron pigs instead of regular pigs, because we like metal. <laughs> Also, before I forget, wanted to point out one quick thing about all the Gutwaters and the Druids. They can all perform blood sacrifices, so they may not have any blood magic, but I just wanted to point out. I barely ever use this because I never really dive into blood with this nation, but they are capable of it, so just something to keep in mind. Real quick, wanted to touch on heroes from our Vrini. We have the Blinded One, we have the Antlered One, and we have the Wanderer. Blinded One is actually blind, his precision sucks, and he's a good astral mage, but that's about it. I mean, nothing really special about him. He's nice to have, but nothing super special. The antlered one, same thing. He's just like another boar commander. He's got good berserker, animal awe, inspirational, really strong, really strong. But I mean, just, you know, he's a human troop that shows up rarely and occasionally. The one that really enables certain things is the wanderer here. When he shows up, he could lead boars pretty well, but he also has nature four, which is really, really difficult for you as a nation to get otherwise. So if you get this guy with a thistle mace, which he can obviously craft himself, you can give him the ability to rush mother oak for you, which would would free up your pretender chassis from having to have you know nature four or five and with our pretender chassis we can do pretty much everything we want but if you didn't want that or if you wanted to be more efficient with points or anything like that if you're the only nature nation in the game that you're playing that's going to be rushing mother oh waiting for this guy might be worth it but you never know but that being said if you save the points on your pretender you might be able to crank those points over into luck so you might generate this guy a little sooner something to consider but the heroes on this nation really aren't super enabling they're all in the same magic path that you already have so just something to think about all right guys with pretender creation we're gonna go with my awake setup first if you think you're gonna be in an early war like really early and you need a jump start on your research this guy's the guy to go with he has horrifically bad scales we got heat two we have sloth two we have turmoil two and misfortune two so it gets really bad with death two and one magic but we get quickness on turn one to help our boar warriors kill people we have shock resist to counteract our iron pigs downside which we'll talk about later. We have Reinvigoration to keep our Tramplers going and our Mages more importantly. We have Larger to make our Tramplers more dangerous. They go from size 5 to size 6 so now they can trample Cavalry. And we get Low Light Vision because we had an extra point but it's kind of nice. Now this gives us a good diverse path of spells we can cast. However the most important is if you go with my Iron Pig strategy this High Earth will get you to Earth Blood Deep Well so you can get that Earth Gem spam going if you need it just to ramp up the amount of Iron Pig production you can do with your Elder Druids. This will let you contend for Mother oak so the most important thing about this build is that this pretender gives you flexibility in global battles you can also you know i took four air just so you can make the air helmet and you can climb air if you really want to you obviously can cast any water spells you want but the primary ones i wanted to focus around were mother oak gift of health things that benefit our nation particularly this this five and this five lets you battle for both and we had to sacrifice quite a bit in the scales but we don't really care about the scales five is about as many as you're going to be able to recruit anyway this is good now if you are not going to be in a battle early, you can take this gentleman, which is the exact same bless, but look at these scales. We can get one more holy per turn. We have better order. We have less sloth. We have the same heat. We have the same death and the same misfortune, but now we're not suffering nearly as many events as we were before. So if you really feel the need for scales, if you don't follow my expansion guide and you don't know how to min-max it, all of this, it's a little easier, but he's dormant. So you're going to be suffering on research. And in my experience, early age Marvern loses early to a bum rush and having this guy awake with bad scales actually lets you fight off those bum rushes a lot better once you get those enchantment based tattoos rolling it helps you out a lot more all right wanted to do a quick little rundown of spells for marverney a good little reminder a couple notable spells sounder of boars they changed the price on this i believe it used to be 20 nature gems for 20 or something similar this gets you a lot of boars really fast but it's expensive because if you look at this nature gems are 15 that's the same as summoning two 
two of the major boars and the boars if you have a decent dominion score giving you two per turn so it only takes you know two of them one and two boars per turn that's four boars per turn it's only going to be five turns before you've made this spell less efficient so try if you're going with a boar strategy get down a contact boar of carnutes carnates on conjuration five crank this out don't ever cast this spell this spell is such a waste of gems when you could instead do this it's just not worth it now there's a big problem with your pigs let me show you so here is our basic great boar from marvel wonderful i think i have gifts of health on or something ridiculous because i'm just goofing around with spells here so just ignore that they have moderate hit points their base hit points are 20 six protection size five so the same size as cavalry you're not going to be able to trample any horses and horses are going to thump you to death they're going to repel you all day and they're going to murder you with your defense skill and these guys have a morale of what is it without dominion their base morale of 13 which is great but it's not unstoppable and your magic resist is four if you have a five if you have a magic scale penalty it's minus one you're vulnerable to virtually everything so depending on a super killy bless with these guys is beneficial but not it's not something you want to lean on because they're too squishy even regular troops can chop these guys up because when they trample through they get chopped in half by anything that does you know 15 to 20 damage just bloop by boars and then your boars start trampling and freaking out and running back over your own mages it's a really ugly thing to see so instead there's another spell so we went over conjuration we have the obvious ones the earth powers those kind of things the summon the quick boars and then the boar of carnutes but here's here's the weird one that i like to do a lot so many many marverni players will rush down alteration to level uh, to level five to get mother oak problem with mother oak in my multiplayer games at least is you're almost always battling somebody playing early age pangea and they will stomp you in the race for this unless they're just a mediocre player and you never want to base your strategies on mediocre players right mother oak grants you 10 nature gems each month and growth in the province where it's cast that's great for your home cap 10 nature gems each month that's something that if you're fighting over that you could theoretically generate that by finding sites i mean you find something like the dying forest you get two nature gems there's a couple other forest sites that are like three or four nature gems like a i forget what it's called but it's like the large forest gives you like three nature gems per turn this is not in my opinion if it's free take it and spam out the boar of carnutes to your heart's content but if it's not free something i like to do you're going down to enchantment three anyway for awaken tattoos this is super important for your like year one end of year one to year two strategies i feel because it helps you continually expand and fight little battles with easy because the aoe is pretty good it's five plus but if you continue down enchantment and you get all the way down here to enchantment seven first of all going down enchantment gets you earthquake warriors which allows your all of your troops basically use slashing weapons this enables them all to stun people on hit that is insanely good for attrition as well as for murdering people especially those with high defense now if you have that earthquake warriors it only takes one hitting a high defense unit for it to get stunned and then the rest of your troops pile on and kill it in addition to that you get the basic stuff you get weapons of sharpness if you want to do armor piercing you get giant strength warriors which is huge aoe plus four strength you get a lot of buffs that you can use and stomp people with it's really good but once you get to seven if you grab this earth blood deep well it's not ordinarily contested nearly as much as mother oak is at least in my games in early age and if you manage to get into a cave and drop this you get 22 earth gems per month and let me show you what the trick is it's a spell that is not very unique to marverni you see no blue here right but there's one spell that's completely different for you than it is for everybody else and that's iron pigs if you look normally this gives you seven ordinary boars i think they're lying i think it's 10 for everybody but for us we're getting 10 for sure and we are not getting the ordinary pigs when you summon them as anybody else you get seven ordinary pigs iron pigs they have 20 protection 15 hit points they are undisciplined and they trample with eight morale and five magic resist when marverni does it we get 10 extra hit points on each boar we get a disciplined pig that we can tell to hold and attack so that they can have buffs put on them more easily and their morale is 13 instead of eight this solves so many of our boar problems it's unreal now we're still going to be vulnerable to magic and we're still going to be vulnerable to shock which is why i took shock resist on our bless but these boars are now extremely formidable because you can have them do specific things heck if you're against an army of giants but you know they have mages that are human size you can always set these guys on hold and attack rear there's all sorts of stuff you could do with these guys they're no longer clueless so you can actually script them that's one of the most important things for marverni i think you can do and since it isn't really obvious that this is different i wanted to point it out for you guys just so you knew the difference because it's so much easier to script that guy than this undisciplined dork with 20 hit points that you had to wait for or the normal iron pigs that other people pay for
for. So make sure you focus on that spell. The obvious other spells that you can do in early wars are Stellar Cascades. Very, 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 very easy for you to spam this and very powerful for you to spam this 100 precision spell. So there's a common problem with Marverni players where Gifts from Heaven has precision minus three. It's inaccurate no matter how good you are. So even if you make up for this, it's still just going to whiff. And Gifts from Heaven is something that your guys default to, unfortunately, when they go off script. Now we get an area of fire here from Gifts from Heaven, which I don't remember getting this in Dominions 5. It was just a flat damage. But the area of fire is new. But in addition to that, when you're spamming Gifts from Heaven, it's really easy to murder your own pig, right? So if you ignore my bless idea of quickness and you go for a Blood Vengeance build, make sure instead of Gifts from Heaven, you're spamming Stellar Cascades because this does fatigue damage, which is not reflected on your own druids. First of all, you won't miss with 100 precision, but it's not reflected on your own druids if it hits anybody with Blood Vengeance. So that's just a little tip to know. Um, other than that, you're just, you're not so much focused around these spamming. This is great for early wars, spamming Stellar Cascades and or Gifts from Heaven. I like to lead with Gifts from Heaven when they're still on the other side of the battlefield and then come in with Stellar Cascades when they get closer. The primary thing you're obsessed with is, you know, the pretty typical Communion Master, Communion Slave, set yourself up to cast any of the major battlefield spells. You see you have really good Earth access, you have really good Nature access. These are just guys I goofed around with the transformation spell. But here's your Elder Druids. Really good Earth, really good Nature, really good Astral access. These guys can be set up pretty easily. You have every single buff in your Communion that you want. This is a premier Communion nation. You have Regeneration, you have Iron Skin and Reinvigoration and Summon Earth Power. You have Frozen Heart Spam against Thugs. There's a lot of stuff you can do once you get your communion set up. It's extremely versatile. Now, you're obviously limited in your schools, but that's why we took the Pretender we did. I also want to show you guys a particularly nasty combination we have in Alteration here. If you get all the way down to level 8 or level 9, remember, on the Bless, I recommended Quickness as well as Larger, which is a big investment, I agree. But once you get to the late game and people start to have massive counters, you know, giant spam, anything that's huge enough to ignore you, you took the Larger Bless so that we can still trample Cavalry since we're size six instead of five. Plus it also spreads our boars out a little further. So they're not getting hit with our own gifts of heaven spam. That way we're not killing two boars in one shot. We're only killing one. But in addition, there are two spells that we can easily pull through a communion. If you set this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, a couple of these nature guys into a communion themselves up, you see this nature two guy, if he has, let's say eight communion slaves in his communion, then he'll go up to nature five. And what you can do is this spell down here, army of giants requires nature five for three gems you can make your entire army enlarged one additional size more hp and strength you can raise your boar size to seven that can trample a lot of giants if you remember jotun most of their giants are size six your size six if you cast this now you're size seven you can now trample jotunheim giants then when you hit level nine if you learn this spell army of rats they double up you can shrink the enemy army by one so now your boars if you buff your boars with army of giants and you shrink the enemy with army of rats which both are extremely easy to do for you for seven nature gems or nine if you cast one to reduce fatigue on both which i'd recommend for you know seven to nine nature gems you can guarantee that your boars are trampling anything size seven or lower so most giants like Jotunheim are size six. So you'll be killing virtually everything with your trampling boars. And now that you've got a bunch of iron boars running around, you've got a really, really strong late game counter. So the rest of the stuff on alteration in, in earth, you know, still works. Marble army, army of gold, army of lead, army of bronze, all that stuff, still good. You can also go with, with enchantment and go with, you know, steel slice warriors getting you armor piercing damage, which makes your basic troops pretty disgusting. But since your pigs have blunt, earth shatter army makes them disgusting against things they can't trample. So consider all the big major buffs. You're a human nation that is a natural communion nation. You need to take advantage of the communions. Good thing I already did that communion video, huh? But what you really want to do is get your communions going and get some of those heavy, heavy battlefield wide spells. And now that I taught you guys the trick about the disciplined iron boars from Marverni, now it'll make it a lot easier for you to land those buffs on them before they go charging off and trampling everybody to death. All right, guys, and real quick, before we get away from the spells, I just wanted to show you guys 18 turns ago or so, I produced these actually probably more like 14 turns ago i produced all of these boars to pump out pigs and yes we have a ton of pigs now so if you look we get 22 26 29 let's round it let's say four of them are 100 so if we get 10 of them it's 220 in a year and a half you know something like that but in one turn i had four mages cast iron pigs and this is their base hit points with our blessed 32 so we have 40 of these pigs in one turn's production and if you manage to get
get up Earthblood Deepwell, which I did in this game, obviously, as a test game. But if you manage to get that up, you can routinely sit. This is year three and a half, wandering around being lazy, obviously, with things. But you could theoretically, at the end of year two and a half, year three, you could have Iron Pig production nonstop. And this is right about the time when people are going to start crushing your boars with battlefield spells and giants and similar things. So if you're making 23 Earth Gems a turn, you can crank out two and a half, two and three quarters of these iron pigs per turn. And that's going to be, you know, 20 or 30 pigs per turn. And again, 32 HP, 20 protection, disciplined, and tramp. These guys are monstrous. It really lets you set things up a lot better. I wouldn't completely place the boars, frankly, but having a bunch of these guys with, you know, 13 base morale versus all these goofballs with 13 base morale and no protection. And yes, that matters because if they get thumped for a ton of HP, they morale check and you really don't want these guys trampling back over your mages. Just something to think about. It's a really useful tool if you use it correctly. All right, guys, wanted to show you one of the primary reasons we took death on our pretender chassis. I know we were squeezing a lot in there, but you can see we took level two death and then we just threw a skull staff on. Specifically, I did this so that under conjuration, we can cast a spell summon specter. Summons the specter of a dead mage, binds it to his surface, death magic as well as other paths of magic. He can pop all sorts of other paths, but the primary path is astral. So you see how this one popped an astral in a water random that means this guy is going to be able to enter our communions and give us full range of death magic so if we really want to climb up high death during combat we're able to do it now try that as a last little trick you guys can use to sneak death into your communions and you'll start to notice there are a lot of ways we can do this with a versatile pretender chassis all right guys that was the end of marverni part one the theory next i'm going to be showing you guys follow through the spell spamming and how to set everything up as well as expansion and we'll discuss boars a tiny bit more you'll see why see you then